Yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. 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 Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. So we have uh, arithmetic or arithmetic sequences. You can pronounce it both ways. And um, so let's talk about what that is. And then we're going to learn a couple formulas for it. And that's that. So first, uh, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence or an ordered list of numbers that is that forms a pattern. But that it forms a pattern from with a common difference. So it's a fixed number that's being added in between the sequence. So for example, if I wrote these numbers down right now, this would be an arithmetic sequence. Okay. Because they're going in a specific pattern. The pattern is I'm adding three every single time. So for it to be an arithmetic sequence, it has to be some, there has to be a common difference in between the numbers. And then it's sequence. And then we can go and write two, we can write an equation and, or I'm sorry, we can write two formulas for it, recursive or explicit. And the common difference here is three because I'm adding three each time. Now, with sequences, there's also terms in a sequence. Not every sequence is going to start from 1 or from 0. They might start from 100. So there's always terms in the sequence. Here's the first term, the second term, the ter third term, the fourth, and the fifth. And then when we finally are able to write our formulas, we can use those in order to use that formula in order to figure out what the hundredth term of the sequence would be without having to continue the pattern. So here we go. The first thing you're going to be asked to do is you're going to have to determine is something an arithmetic sequence, okay, or an arithmetic sequence. So the first thing we need to do is you're going to be asked that. So you're going to be given a list of numbers. You're going to have to determine is it a sequence or not. So we need to figure out what the common difference is and then make sure that they have a common difference each and every single time. So it's just making sure that they have that common difference every single time. So this particular sequence right here, they have a common difference of 13 each and every single time. So therefore, yes, it is. So now that we know the common difference is 13, I want to talk to you about other things that you're going to see in the sequence. So with sequences, we use n a lot as a variable to let n equal the term number of the sequence. So what we do is we actually say nth term quite a bit. What's the nth term? So n is going to be the variable that we're going to use to represent the term number in a sequence. So you'll see a lot. You'll see nth term would be something like this, a to the nth term. Or we also see subscript of a to the nth term. And I'll show you some examples of this in just a second. But when we replace n with the number, it's asking for that term. So for example, this right here, a and 1, is asking you for the first term of the sequence. So it's saying, what is the first term? This is how we ask for it in sequences. So the first term of this particular sequence is 26, because that's the first number listed. You might also see it written like this. This is subscript notation. So in a subscript, it's the same thing, but we have a giant capital A, and then we have a one that's lower, almost like an exponent, but below the number. That's called a subscript. So this is subscript notation. This is asking for the same thing as this one. You're probably actually going to see this notation even more. So this is also asking for the first term, which is just 26. This is asking you for the second term. Well, the second term of the sequence is 39. So the second term is 39. And this is asking for the sixth term. Well, one, two, three, four, five. I only have five terms here. So if I added 13 again, it'd be 91. I can continue my sequence. So you're going to be asked to find a certain term. And this is how they're going to ask you. They might say, find the 13th term. Or they might just show what is a subscript 13. A parenthesis 13. And that's how we ask for what the nth term is of a sequence. And you're going to see it look like this a lot as well. So now let's look at how to write for, how to write this formula down just so we can see what's going on with the sequence. So this is what's called the recursive formula. Okay. So the recursive formula contains two parts. Okay. It has the part one where it tells you what the first term of the sequence is. And then it also has part two, 
which tells you what the nth term of the sequence is. So, okay, so part one and part two. So for every single sequence, we have to know what the first term is because they're not always going to start from zero. So we can't just say, oh, you add 13 every time. Why add 13 starting from where? So A1 tells you what the first term of the sequence is. So for an example, for using the same sequence we just looked at, when we started at 26 and we started adding 13, my first term is 26. So this is what I would write down if I asked you to write the recursive formula. I would write A1 equals 26. Cool. Then I have to write down what the nth term. So this is where we're trying to write down well, what's happening with every single term here. So there's two parts of this. So A to the n minus 1. I know that looks a little bit confusing. But this means the previous term of the sequence. Okay. So if I was looking for the nth term, I would need to find, well, what's the term before it? So, and that's a to the n minus one. So for example, if I wanted to know what the third term was, I would need to figure out, well, what's the second term? Okay, so the second term, if I want to know what the third term was, I would say, well, I need to take three minus one, because this is n. Well, that's really the second term. And then I gotta add whatever the common difference is. The common difference in this particular one is 13. So using this example, again, if I want to know what the third term was, I have to take whatever the n is, as in this case, n is 3, subtract 1 from it, so I need to know what the previous term is. That's the second term. Well, the second term in this particular sequence is 39. So now I can plug in 39, add 13 to it. That's going to give me my third term, which is 52. So in order for this recursive formula to work, you have to know what the previous number is. So this a to the, this nth term right here just is a standard formula that I can then plug in for anything. So if I wanted to know what the 15th term was for this particular recursive formula, I know I started at 26, so I got to figure out, all right, well, what's the 14th term equal to? And I gotta add 13 to it. Well, if I don't know the 14th term, I gotta figure out what the 14th term is. So that's one of the downfalls of the recursive formulas. And I gotta actually do some work to figure out, all right, what is the 14th term? So I might have to start doing some math to get there. But this is how we write it out. The recursive formula is a way for us just to show exactly what's happening in this sequence. This sequence, I'm starting from 26, and then I'm adding 13 to every single term from before it. And that's what's happening in this sequence. So this right here would be a final answer for my recursive formula of a sequence. This is the final answer. Now, before we get on to more examples, I want to show you what the explicit formula is as well. So the explicit formula is totally different. Okay, so the explicit formula, it's the nth term again is equal to, so whatever term we're trying to find is equal to the first term plus parentheses, whatever the term number is that we're looking for, minus one. So that's going to give me again the previous term times the common difference. Okay, so we're going to start with the first term, then we're going to add the term number, whatever term we're looking for. So we're replacing n again. We're going to subtract one to find that previous term. And then we're going to multiply it by the common difference. So let's use our same example that we've been working with. Okay, so we knew the recursive formula. Again, I'll just rewrite it real quick. We're at 26. And then the nth term was the previous term plus 13. That's recursive. For explicit, I'm going to fill out my nth term is equal to my first, which is 26, plus n minus 1 times 13. And I like to write my multiplication in parentheses. This would be the explicit formula. Now here's why the explicit formula is really nice. If I wanted to find the sixth term, if I was looking for the sixth term of the sequence, well, I could take 6 and plug it in for n, and then I can just solve. Because if I plug in 6 for n, well, that's going to be 5 times 13, and then I'm going to add 26. Well, then I actually got to do 5 times 13. 
Well, 5 times 13 is, let's see here, 15, so that's 65. Plus 26, that does give me 91. And we know, we already knew that this sixth term was 91 because we added it earlier. So with the explicit formula, it's a lot easier to just plug in a term number and substitute it in and then um, actually multiply, solve, and then you don't have to find out previously. It's just going to take you straight to the number. But this is how I start off with the recursive formula. Now, um, one thing we can definitely do with the with the explicit formula is I can definitely um, distribute do the distributed property and simplify this as well. So when I do that distributed property, it's going to clean it up a little bit. Whoops. Okay, sorry. So it's going to clean it up a little bit. So when I do that distributive property, I'm going to erase down here real quick what we got going on. So this is 26 plus 13n minus 13. So I got to add 13. I'm sorry, I got to combine like terms, which is really 26 and negative 13. But 26 and negative 13 makes 13. So this is 13n plus 13. And this would actually be the more appropriate final answer for my explicit formula. So I cleaned it up. And if you guys notice, it looks like it's a linear equation. And that makes sense because we're adding, we have a common difference that's the same every single time. So the slope would change by the same amount each and every single time we go over one. So it is going to look like it's going to be in a linear equation in slope intercept form where the zero term before we start the sequence is going to be that y intercept at zero. And then that's going to take me to my first term when I add that common difference. If I plug in one here, it's going to take me to my first term, which is going to be 26. But now I can plug in any number and it is going to give me that term in the sequence. So my final answer for my explicit formula would be here, but this is what we use to get there. Okay, we're going to look at another example here. So I actually want to use this as an example to write both recursive and I also want you to write explicit. So actually see if you can try it on your own real quick. I know we've only seen one example, but I think if we look at it, it should be pretty simple to just kind of plug in. So try it, pause it, see how you do. Okay, so for my recursive formula, we know that there's two pieces to this formula. I need to know what my first term is. Well, this one, again, we start at 26. One day, 26 rent cost. This is a sequence we're decreasing by the same amount each time. So my first term in the sequence is 26. My nth term in this sequence is whatever the previous term is. I have to figure out what that common difference is. Well, it's 12. So that's all I got to do for recursive formula. Now, for the explicit formula, I need to plug in these values into the formula. So that's going to be n minus 1 times that common difference, which is 12. So this is what I started with. Then I'm going to do some distributive property. And then I'm going to finally simplify it to where I'm going to have, let's see here, this is going to be 14 plus 12n. So here's my explicit formula, and there's my final answer. And again, it shows me the y-intercept is going to be, it's a, it looks like it's a linear equation. The y-intercept's at zero when x is zero, which means that's when my n is zero in this case. I haven't actually started the sequence, but once I add 12 to that, it's going to give me my first term. Okay. Cool. Now, sometimes you're going to be given like the recursive formula and you're going to have to write an explicit formula from there. So here I have my recursive formula and I have all the information I need from the recursive formula. I have my first term is seven and I have my common difference is four. So now I'm just going to plug that in to the explicit formula because again, as we've said before with the explicit formula, it's really easy for me to figure out what the 120th term is. I can just plug it in. So I know it's going to be take my first term, add it to n minus 1, 
times that common difference. And then I can just simplify from here. So here's my explicit formula. And the reason why I would do this again, because now if I want to find the 20th step, or if I want to figure out what is the 20th term of this particular sequence, now I can just plug in 20. If I plug in the number 20, I get 83. So the 20th term of this sequence is 83. And that's so I don't have to count up by 7 20 times. Okay. Now, that's all I got for you. So here's the sequence, write the recursive and the explicit formula for it, and then um, tell me what the 12th term is of that sequence. So I hope this helped. I will get a lot of practice in this in the next few days. So if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching. Good day is out.